Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back. It's Latif, and uh, welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast with Latif Mikado. <clears throat> uh, thank you last night for uh, for hanging out with me. Uh, if you remember, I was I was actually outside. Electricity had gone down. Well, this morning uh, it was it was still down, so we had to actually sleep with like that. It wasn't bad at all. The weather was really nice. Um, we didn't need any heat. We didn't need the air. We went out to eat. We had flashlights, candles. Good thing I <clears throat> I mess around with the film equipment because I got plenty of uh, battery powered lights. Uh, so you know we used some of that. So we actually did pretty good. It really wasn't um, um wasn't a wasn't a much of a problem. A hot water heater. Um, we took showers early enough. So. Um, so we were good. We were actually good to go. However, this morning, um, when they restored everything, uh, we still had a problem with the modem. So the computers were still ha- acting up. So I had to do a lot on my phone. And there's only so much I can do on, on my phone. I don't really send pictures. I, I keep everything on my computers, on my hard drives. I have several terabytes of uh, storage um, where I keep mostly pictures, keep all my contracts. Everything's in there. So um, when I have to move things around, I have to be at my computer. Doing it from my, from my phone is really, I can't really do it. I can maybe pull some stuff down from my Google Drive and send it, but I don't keep a lot. I just keep stuff on there that I really don't want to lose, you know. So, but, um, I mean, other than that, you know, we're up and running now. Um, however, good thing that that happened yesterday and not tonight because it's already getting cold. Now, yesterday, pretty much all day today, I was able to chill out in shorts. We had to go run some errands. I was able to jump in the Jeep with my shorts and a hoodie. That's the way I like to roll. Um, but as it started to get uh, later, it started to cool off. And I noticed because we started getting the wind, and I went out, throughout the garbage, and I felt it. <laughs> and I said, okay. And your know, Angel watches, uh, she tracks the weather, as I mentioned. <laughs> So um, she let me know it's going to be freezing tomorrow morning uh, <clears throat> when we get up to uh, bring Santana to the bus. So um, so we'll be prepared for that. That's fine. Heat is on. We're good to go. We're good to go. And it's going to be Friday. It's Thursday night. It's going to be Friday tomorrow. Um, Friday's a work day for me. I work. I got a lot of stuff to do. And then Saturdays and Sundays, okay? Now, I love to work. I love what I'm doing. I'm I'm a straight up creator. I love creating stuff. So work is not stressful for me. I can do it. I I break away from work for the family. I don't break away from work because I need a rest or I need a break. I don't. Um, uh, working is very therapeutic for me. Um, it's what I enjoy. It's what I enjoy doing. Um, so what I do is when I come into the office. So, all right, <clears throat> during the week, you would think, because I work from home, and I have worked from home for about 25 years. I've always worked from home. And uh, I've had regular offices where you have to jump in the train and a bus and go here and go there. And also here in North Carolina, we had a place where we were building into my office. And the more I thought about it, the more I looked at the situation, the more I played with the pros and cons, I just realized that it really made no sense. It really didn't. Um, the office I had in Manhattan was kind of cool. It was on 42nd and 8th Avenue, prime location. I was paying about $800 a month. And I remember because I used to have such a hard time paying that thing. Like every month, man, I was coming up with an excuse um, <clears throat> because I wasn't generating any money. I really wasn't. I was running my label, Style and Free Records, 
and it really wasn't selling. It wasn't paying the bills, man. <laughs> you know, it really wasn't. I was taking a hit. I couldn't even recoup the money I put into it. So, so mom was helping me. Um, wherever I could, you know, hustle, get some loot. That's how I was covering it. But um, and I kept on just. I was. It was like I was racing the clock. I was like, okay, I gotta try to make something happen before the next rent is due. What I learned about what I learned was the guy who was renting it to me, who was letting me take that place. I realized we didn't have a lease. It was a handshake. I gave him his money. And what it was, it was this real old dude, very rich, that owned that entire building. And he lived on one of the floors, I think way up on the top. And and that building was half commercial and half residential and a lot of people that were like from the Broadway plays like I remember uh, the guy who played the actual lion in the Lion King he was in the elevator with me so um, this was the first guy when uh, that play first opened in on Broadway so I was right there on Broadway anybody who knows 42nd Street is Broadway basically um, that's where all the theaters were um, and uh, so you had a lot of a lot of theater people and then there was a, a lot of offices also so you would go in there and I remember the way I found that place is I read an ad it was a production company and I forgot what they were looking for I don't know if they were looking for artists I don't know what they were looking for I forgot but anyway I ended up going to this meeting I called in for whatever it was maybe I was I don't think I was looking for a deal for me at that point I forgot or maybe I was gonna work at a production company I don't remember but anyway <laughs> so I get to the building I gotta find the the address uh, you guys can find it's a classic classic building um, right next to uh, I think it was attached to like a topless place like a one of them topless uh, clubs that's 42nd and 8th for you that's what it was about it was worse back in the days now but it's now still has its little sections even though most of it is disney but certain areas are still a little raunchy but anyway so i went up to this office and I knocked on the door and this dude opens up little short black dude um and he um i introduced him saying he lets me into his office i'm not kidding you man I'm not even kidding you. The office was the size of a large walk-in closet. I'm totally. When he opened up his door, like in order, when he opened up his door, you ended up behind his desk. And then you had to close the door to come around the desk and then sit in front of him. It was very narrow. All he had in there was a stereo. And then it was, you know, decked out in posters, hip-hop posters. It was an older dude, too. And real, real, you know, thuggish dude looked like he's straight up from the off the streets and trying to make something happen, trying to do something there. It was a nice guy. I forgot the guy's name, but his office definitely didn't impress me at all. <laughs> okay? So, and I don't have no idea what he was, what he was paying for it. But anyway... I, um, when I started looking for an office in Manhattan, I, I spotted that building that was being advertised. And it was for, you know, um, they called it share space, share individual office, whatever the case. But um, it was really low key, like it was in the RT, I think it was in the Village Voice or something. And I recognized the building, the address. So I went over there, and it's this tall, skinny white kid who comes out. And, you know, we meet and he shows, he tells me what floor to go and he shows me this office and the office was dope. The whole thing was $800. So I said, okay, cool. You know, he didn't need no security. Just give me the 800 and move in. So I did that. Had my boy Rick Ramos at that time. He was helping me out. Uh, Shout out to Rich, um, Ricky. Um, Anyway, um, we went, I remember buying some great car- carpet. It had the drop ceiling. I remember we pulled down the panels from the drop ceiling. We like repainted them white because they were kind of like yellowish. And then the frame 
uh, that held the drop ceiling, we painted it like a glossy black. So when you put the panels back up, it almost looked checkered. And then we did the walls black. I mean, we it was a dope office. It was a hell of a lot bigger. Like, his office was like, probably about eight of his offices fit in this one. I mean, probably more than that because it was pretty big. And, um, the, the, but the only thing is I really wasn't doing anything. I had my one desk. It was an Ikea desk that somebody, I had no, another business with somebody. It was a computer company. Um, and when we closed down, he let me have the desk. So I had that desk. It was a black Ikea glass desk. Kind of dope. And um, we had this boom box. And then we had some some style and free CDs. I think that was the extent of everything we had. Oh, and I had a lawn entertainment, a lawn entertainment um, uh, plaque, a plate that went on the outside. It kind of stuck out. It was kind of cool. I ordered it. And it's a lawn entertainment. I wish I could find it. I know I have it somewhere. And that was the first official um, thing that said Law Entertainment on it. And, and, of course, the business cards. And I held on to that for about six months. For about six months, um, what was so crazy is that it was on the same exact floor as, as the dude that we went to see the last time, right? And we used to stay there. We used to work pretty late trying to do, you know, just really hanging out, trying to figure out how can we make some money? How can we do this? I had... Dudes that went out, I would hire people to go out and distribute the style and free compilation. And I kind of made it almost like a multi-level marketing situation. It was kind of cool. I had regional directors and I would bonus them and they would put the, the stuff on in stores. And um, and that was basically their job. And I got interns to do it. It was interns that I actually paid. So I got people to come in expecting not to make any money however i gave them a commission on everything they sold so it was okay i still wasn't enough to pay the bills um but what happened was i was there real late one time and the bathroom wasn't in the office it was a central bathroom in the hall that everybody used and <laughs> i went to go use the bathroom and when i went to go open the door the old dude from the audition from the from the meeting i had up there he comes out of that bathroom in a towel. Like he just, there's no, there's no shower in there. It was just a sink. <laughs> so he's like, oh, yo, he, he didn't recognize who I was. He didn't recognize me because this was quite a while later on, you know. And um, I said, hey, what's up? What's up, man? And yo, and, and then he went and he kind of, you know, like when you're running from the shower to your bedroom, that's what he did. So it dawned on me that. Yo, Holmes actually lives in that room too. So what he probably did is he probably rented it as an office space and told these people that it was an office, but that he's basically camping out there. And I told you, a dude look, he looked homeless, you know? So, and that's New York for you. Anybody who knows New York hustle, that's New York, you know? So, but anyway, we held on to that spot for a little while. Then it came to a point where Man, I couldn't, man, I was struggling with this rent. It just was not making sense. And then I remember getting my boys, we had a van. And we got a van, and real late now, I didn't want to lose nothing, okay? Real late at night, no, they even had a doorman. Doorman was real cool for me, with me. So, and you could go in there real late, doorman was there. Hey, what you doing? I'm working late tonight. Because it was that kind of thing, it was an artistic place. In that building also, they had like advertising agents um they had mastering like people would do uh, mastering for your cds or your your vinyl whatever you're doing um and i remember i was real cool because i used to see the guy and talk to him i was always real cool with him and i told him i said yeah i said we're gonna we got some new furniture and stuff coming in tomorrow morning so we gotta get this stuff out i don't want to do it tomorrow when there's a lot of traffic he's like yeah yes yeah, that's smart. That's a great idea. He didn't realize that we were rolling stuff out so we could roll the hell up out of there, you know. And I took everything, even the carpet, man. That was a dope, great carpet, you know. The only thing I couldn't take was my paint. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something. He got a nice paint job done on that place because we, we hooked that up, you know. So it probably helped him out when it came time for him to rent it again. And we rolled that thing up and we stepped out of there, you know. And, uh, um... And it was crazy. I just brought everything back to my apartment. I, you know, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't feasible. The art, the office thing was cool. It was cool to say, hey man, what's your office? Oh, on 8th Avenue, 42nd Street. I mean, prime location, man. Uh, however, 
you better know the streets because it's rough and it was rough in that area even at that time um that place was like murderous back in the 70s early 80s but um even then and this was we're talking uh this is the 90s um and it was still rough it was the disney was basically I forgot what year disney came but i think disney was pretty still pretty new I don't think they were totally uh, took over 42nd yet, um, but they were getting there. They were already doing a lot of work, and uh, um, so uh, it was cool. But, you know, I miss that. That's you know, one of the things that I miss about New York. I miss my New York hustle, man. I came out to North Carolina, and uh, even when I moved to the Bronx, me and Angel got uh, we had a, a brownstone there. It was really dope. The building was like... 5,500 square feet. It was my first, the first property I ever bought, and I bought it with no money down. It was, it was, I, I was, I was doing real estate. I was um studying real estate. I don't know if you guys ever seen that late night infomercial uh, Carlton Sheets. He teaches you how to buy properties no money down. Well, yeah. Well, I got the course and I studied it and I, I mastered it and I bought my first property with no money down. Um, and I actually walked away with like 60 grand at the table. So it was a, it was a really good deal. Um, the buyer, the sellers, uh, they, they came off too. They did well. I even let, let one of them continue to rent the place for me. You know, they were renting one of the apartments. Uh, I had the place revamped. And, you know, we sold it. We made, we made a killer. We did really well. We were able to move back, move to North Carolina, buy several par- properties with the profits we made from that. So it was a good deal. But anyway, what I was saying is in the Bronx, though, in the basement, I had it totally remodeled. And it used to have a whole old cold burner. And I had the cold burner converted to gas. And I had it enclosed in like a, a center black, a center, center, cinder block room with a fire door on it. Hooked it up, man, and that office alone was like 1,500 square feet. I mean, it was it was so dope. It was so dope. Um, but somebody broke in, and when people started, when it started getting like that, I was like, okay, I got too much to lose. I don't I don't want this to be like this. And um, so I ended up. Uh, that's when we decided to step off. But uh, my whole New York hustle, man, was nothing like it, man. I, for as long as I can remember, you know, and I'm wondering if I would have, if I was still there, would I have still been in the same mind frame? Would I still have been, you know, I was, I was, I hung out with more people that had shit happening than I did. So I made the moves as far as to go see them, to go to what they were doing, to follow them. And so if they had a session, I would be there if they did this. I think now I do a lot. So a lot of people follow me. So that's the only difference I think it would be, you know, I pretty much lead a lot of the projects that I do. Um, um, and, and I, and then I got my crew that rolls with me. Um, but when I was, when I was coming up, it was totally, totally reversed. And, uh, yeah. So, but other than that, uh, I don't miss New York. Yeah. I don't miss, I, I was watching something on, um, I think it was on Facebook, and they were showing this video, and they said what people expect to see when they come to New York, and then it shows uh, the reality. So it'll show, like, the beautiful Broadway, and then the next flash is a bunch of rats trying to, you know, climbing on a garbage can, and one thing will show, um, you know, somebody sitting in the park. Next thing you know, it shows a homeless person sleeping in the park, you know? So, and those are the realities you got to look at. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what I got to put in my head because if I watch movies or I watch TV shows, they're always going to show the cool stuff. They're going to show the stuff that make you want to move back. But then when I sit down, I really, really, you know, start to to meditate on why I left and I I, I get rid of those visions and I kind of walk myself to what I remember growing up. Then it tells me, okay, yeah, I'm glad I don't live there anymore. I will always be a New York at heart no matter what. But I don't want to live there. I'm glad I didn't raise my my son. He got raised, almost got raised there. My daughter didn't. Uh, She was born there, but she wasn't raised there. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I mean, me and Angel, we talk about it all the time. Sometimes we see movies, man, the same thing. We'll look at each other and we're like, she'll be like, you miss New York? I'm like, I miss it. I ain't going to lie. I miss it. I can miss anything. 
don't mean I want to go back. <laughs> you know, but we always said, you know, if we ever went back, okay, be that we got older. Right now we're taking, we're helping out with the grandkids. So it's almost like even though the kids are gone, we're helping out with the grandkids. So we can't go anywhere. And they're little. So they're going to they're gonna hold us down for a minute. Um, but we always said if it was just her and I, and the kids were grown and nobody really needed us, that we would move back to New York, probably get a place in Manhattan, um, a beautiful apartment, and probably purchase it, sell the house, purchase an apartment, and, and just live there, you know? And it sounds wonderful. It sounds wonderful. The only thing with New York is you got to have that money. You see, if you're going to make a choice like that, you can't live someplace according to your means. So you can't say, well, I can only afford this much. So this is where I have to live. That's where you're going to run into a problem. And then to sacrifice. See, here I can sacrifice. Over there, it will be kind of, you know, I can sacrifice. But as I get older, I can hit walls. I got to be very careful of the decisions that I make. But if you're moving to a place like in the city, like like New York, I'm not familiar with, you know, I go to Chicago and L.A. all this time, but I'm not familiar with those cities as far as, you know, the living situations. I don't even think I've ever visited well, yeah, in L.A. I visited homes, but I don't think I ever visited anyone's home in Chicago or anything. I don't I don't think so. Um, not that I remember. Nobody's ever invited me. <laughs> um, but if you're going to live in a place like that, money basically, in, this is my opinion, money has to be no object. It cannot be, it, can, it can't be an object. In other words... If you, you need to not find a place according to your budget. You need to find a place that you know you will be happy. And then regardless of whatever that costs, you should be able to cover it. If you can't do that, then it might not be the spot. I'll tell people all the time, you know, it's New York, Chicago, L.A. It's cool. It's beautiful. But we got the Internet nowadays. People even even artists and actors they they don't live in these cities they live in the suburbs they go to the weirdest Boise Idaho um you know North Dakota you know they they you know they live in these these places that some of them live on islands you know where they're away from the hustle and the bustle and they they're just and they just go there just to work but they don't want to be there their whole life they don't want to live like that and in, nowadays, with the internet, we're not restricted because we're not there. Just because, <coughs> excuse me, just because you don't, everybody says, well, if you want to be an actor, you need to live in L.A. If you want to be a, a movie star or a TV star, you got to live in L.A. If you want to be a Broadway star, you need to live in New York. Um, if you want to be a, a model, you got to live in New York. If you want to be a... Um, a writer, you got to live in New York, Madison Avenue. You're, you're, that doesn't exist anymore. That was the deal at one point, not anymore, especially because of social media. Scouts are constantly on social media looking for people. It's proof just off of YouTube alone. But Justin Bieber was, was discovered on, on YouTube. And I'm just going to name him. You guys could probably make a list of a whole bunch of other people. We're talking about YouTubers. I mean, these people are making movies. I think the first one that I remember was that guy Fred. That guy that talked like this. He was annoying. Me and Angel, we couldn't stand him. I went to see the movie with him, with Erica, and I wanted to kill myself. But anyway, I don't know what happened to that kid. But but I think he was the first superstar that, that came off of YouTube. You know, So nowadays, it's you don't have to be there. And people say, well, you have to be there. You have to, you know, pound the pavement. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not with social media. With social media, man, you just gotta, you just gotta work a lot harder. People say, oh, it's easy because, you know, you know, they think it's easy because, you know, you're you're in your house. But there's a certain level of consistency and quality that you have to put out. Excuse me. Depending on what it is you're trying to do. Depending on what you're trying to do. You know, so 
um, we don't have those uh, those barriers anymore. So right now I'm writing. I don't need Madison Avenue for anything. I don't need to be in the publishing district. I got Amazon. <laughs> My books are all on Amazon. I publish them myself. So same thing with music. You know, everybody doing music. I mean, from YouTube to, you know, Spotify to what you got, SoundCloud. What else you got? You have all these distribution mediums, but you got to hustle. You got to do your thing. You know, no, nothing's, nobody's going to, you can't do something once and expect it to blow up. You got to be consistent, you know, and just keep, and just keep, keep at it, man. If you love your craft, man, just do it. Do it every day if you can. So, um, so I don't, I don't, I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool where I live. I got to deal with the little storms here and there. Power going out. Nah, so what? New York, I was dealing with a lot worse than that. I think if I went back to New York now, I think I'll be like a little spoiled brat. I don't think I'll last. I think I will go and probably after the first, second week, I'll, I'll be, I'll be wanting to come back. So I would really, really think hard before ever making a move like that. Angel too, she says the same thing, you know. I mean, it's good to come out here and step out on my stoop and take a deep breath and chill out. And if you go to sleep, you forget to leave the door, forget to lock the door. I don't recommend it, but it's happened. <laughs> also, you know, we have a house. Our windows are all on the first floor, you know. We don't worry about those things. Thank God, you know. Uh, so it's a pretty decent neighborhood. We don't take it for granted, though. You know, windows are locked, doors are locked. Um, I wouldn't recommend anybody trying to get into my house. That could... That could be dangerous for everybody involved, <laughs> but uh, um, but I'm I'm cool here. I think it's cool. I'm cool here, you know. And most of the people that I know live in New York. They're trying to get out of here. They're trying to get out of there. A lot of them are moving to Florida. I'm like, oh, like Angel will move to Florida in a second. That's too hot for me. I can't deal with that one consistent climate. That that one season all year long. That's torturous. That's going to kill me, man. I can't do that. Even with winter. I couldn't deal with winter all year long. I love winter. I can't deal with it all, all year long. Now, yesterday's weather was dope. I don't know. What was it? Like 65 degrees? 62 degrees? It was perfect. But um, but over here in North Carolina, it's like New York. It changes. So we have the four seasons here. You know, yesterday was... Was uh, yesterday was spring, and tomorrow's gonna be winter. <laughs> so we get all four. They're not always in the order that they're supposed to be, but we have four seasons. And um, but anyway, that's that's pretty much it. So, all right, guys, I just you know just had a couple things on my mind. I just wanted to share that with you. See what you think. I hope you you're still enjoying this. Um. I'm going for the gusto, man. I'm going for the gusto. I enjoyed last night because I was able to take, you know, my setup outside and uh, and do my podcast and sit down and edit and and then put it up and, and distribute it. And it was cool. It was cool. And that's, that was the whole point of this. So once I get back on the road, um, should get, you know, the, the topics will change a little bit, be more about what I'm doing at that point. But I still encourage you guys to follow along. Just Just hang in there with me. Um, I have other plans, uh, other ideas um, that I want to implement with the podcast. So, you know, stay tuned, man. Be a part of it, you know. So, but uh, look out for the Facebook page. I think I'm going to drop it tonight, if not tomorrow. Okay. So I know I said I was going to do it today, but with the power, everything kind of threw me off. So I'm backed up a day. But anyway, all right, guys, listen, I appreciate it, man. God bless. Take care of yourself. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Hopefully. And um, good night, first, first out. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.